This is week five of the fall trimester of 2017. This week I finished up my portrait painting of Kevin. I'm really happy with how it turned out. So on Monday, I knew this week that I really wanted to push getting everything to be brighter where it needed to be. And uh, in the past when I've made things brighter, I really focus on white in my mixtures to bring things up. Um, though then I start struggling with the look of it because then things turn out to look chalky or pasty um, and I wanted to avoid that. So on Monday I was focusing getting things to be brighter with yes having to add more white in my mixtures to get this to happen but then also relying on stronger colors so things would be more colorful which makes them appear to be more bright. So I'm making my mixtures up making them more colorful and when I'm applying that onto the painting uh, things start kind of feeling awkward for me and I start to get worried that so far this painting has been a really s smooth transitions from the drawing to getting a transferred first wash locking in and now that I'm starting to key it up I feel like I'm kind of losing control a bit and uh, putting on the more colorful and brighter values just aren't meshing so well and I don't know I was just feeling worried today like um I might this might be where it starts to the painting starts to fall apart and so um, I'm trying still trying to key it up and not uh, take away I know that the painting has to move forward, so even though it's feeling awkward, I'm still just trying to like push forward with it. And so what I did was I started on the cheek on the right. And so I started there and I'm just moving across the face to the other side, and the forehead and the, the whole mouth area because I don't, I don't want the cheek to look really bright and colorful and everything else to look dull. So I'm trying to work everything at once. And so I think that's kind of difficult as well for me right now to be juggling everything because you're not just keying up and making things more colorful, but uh, anything you move kind of affects the, the drawing and your uh, value structure and color structure, everything. So I don't know. It's just a lot to juggle, I think, which is why I was just <laughs> feeling awkward, I guess. And then also for for Kevin's skin, it's very colorful and there's a lot of really quick transitions from his, the dark shadows to the really bright um, highlights that he has. So I things were just, I guess, looking jumpy and the transitions weren't as smooth and as controlled as I had before. So on Tuesday, I did everything that I did the day before, still just trying to key and brightening everything up. I felt like Monday, even though it was feeling awkward, it was a really good base to work on it on um, this day on Tuesday and things went a lot more smoothly. So since I already had the bright, the brighter, higher values on it, I then was able to take time to then work on the transitions from the Shadow Star Captains to the Brightest Brights and felt a whole lot better about the painting and so the parts that were um, too jumpy or not meshing well I felt like I was able to get control of them that day so uh, yeah Monday felt really awkward today I felt like well I just got control of it so um, maybe when I'm brightening things up and kind of taking risks to do that it's okay for things to have a little bit of I don't know, shakiness to it because I felt like, um, even though it felt weird, I was, I was able to bring everything back up to a nice painting layer, I guess, by the end of this day. Wednesday, I mostly worked on getting Kevin's features to be more accurate. Um, with brightening things up, I don't know if it's, it's kind of like uh, when you move a painting farther along, you start to see that your drawing looked really accurate before and because you're putting just getting it closer to life value wise or color wise 
once you're getting it closer to life, you can see that the the drawing that you thought was really accurate before, you can actually bring that up to the errors that you had that maybe you couldn't see uh, are clear now. So I'm seeing that I can move things around, uh, especially with the eyes. The, the left eye specifically has been really bugging me. I know something is off about it, and I had I actually had Magda critique me this day, Matt critique me this day, and then also Brett all separately. So I had a lot of different eyes on my painting giving me different perspectives into how I can correct things, which I found very helpful. Um, Brett said something in particular that really helped me out with that left eye, and he was saying that if I if I take my hands and I make a circle around his eye in the painting, and I'm just looking at the eye, the, the one that's on the left, the one that I'm struggling with, looks like when I do that, it looks like the eye is facing straight on to me. Um, and he was saying that that's not so, it needs to look like it's receding back away, because that's the receding plane. So um, he was saying that, and I was, I was talking to him about that and saying how I would correct that, and I say that when I look at the model Kevin, and then I look at my painting, I'm seeing how, oh, maybe this angle, I can increase the angle, and maybe that would help to do it, and he was saying, okay, but when you're thinking about, when you're looking at Kevin, that actual real Kevin, that um, he was saying it sounds like I'm looking at him, and I'm thinking about him in 2D to correct my painting in 2D, and he was saying, instead of doing that, look at the real Kevin in life, he is a three-dimensional thing, and look at, at your painting like it's a three-dimensional thing. And so he was saying, instead of thinking about how you would correct the angles two-dimensionally to look three-dimensionally, cut out the whole two-dimensional thinking and just think of your painting as, okay, so the plane needs to be receding for the left eye, but instead it looks like it's facing flat. So he was saying, think about you're going to take your hand and you're going to push the eye so it recedes back and up a little bit. And so that made a lot of sense to me and it really clicked with what I needed to do then. And so then I, I fixed the painting up drawing wise and also I could see where to get it to look like it's receding back at that angle, I could soften certain edges in the eye as well. So that was really helpful and I feel like finally I'm getting that eye to be more accurate. Now on Thursday, Kevin wasn't here this day for the morning for the model session, but John came in to finish up the pose we had done before Kevin. So John missed a day from his two and a half weeks of modeling, so he was making it up today. And this was, this painting, I like how it's turning out, or how it turned out for a block-in. Um, I feel like I, I learned definitely a lot with how to block in a painting. It wasn't necessarily a fun painting to work on because I was just really frustrated a lot through the whole process. So I was kind of dreading this day when I knew that I'd have to, I'd be working um, on this painting again. But it, actually, surprisingly, it was, it was pretty nice because it was nice to not have looked at this painting for two and a half weeks, and then have a complete fresh eye, not just in front of the painting by itself, but the models is also there, so I can really compare the two. And so that that was surprisingly good, and I it was good. And so I mostly just worked on the shadow line and correct the shadow line by getting it softer in some areas or sharper where it needed to be. Um, Again, like this pose that I talked about in previous videos, the model moves around a whole lot, and so I'm not. I guess when he's when he's up there, I'm seeing a figure in life that's in a similar pose, but definitely not the exact pose. And the pose switches each time after his breaks. He gets up there, which had been that's what he'd been doing before. But even though it's not. An exact copy of from life to my painting it still is helpful to see how I can be treating different parts of a human body in the painting by seeing actually seeing someone from life and I guess comparing that to my painting even though the pose 
doesn't exactly match up. So again, um, the painting now is technically finished and I like how it, I like how it turned out. <laughs> okay, so Friday, Kevin came in for the last day of this portrait painting. And so today I did a lot of just looking and comparing and seeing what I could do to change things to make the painting more nice. So I was really trying to do everything I could think of to have a fresh eye while looking at it. And so I used my white mirror, which is a normal mirror. I used my black mirror, which is welding glass that uh, helps you see the, the values better. I use that. Okay, so white mirror, black mirror. I have this viewing lens that makes everything go sapia, so it's another way to look at values. Um, I use my hands, so I'll make a circle and look at Kevin through one hand and then a circle and look through my painting um, with another hand. Another thing that's similar to doing that is I have these two pieces of cardboard that have holes that are maybe the, the size of my pinky, so small, just one hole in each card, and I would hold it up so I'm looking through a viewing spot of um, a little tiny hole where I just see Kevin's head through one and then a little tiny hole where I see the portrait of Kevin's head and so I'm comparing the differences through that, which um, might sound kind of a little stupid looking through cardboard, but it makes such a difference and it's not expensive at all. I think I used the back of an old sketchbook. Maybe I should make a video about that because um, it's like a, such a stupid simple tool that I get a lot of use out of. And then I was asking other students if they would look at my work, uh, look at this painting and see if they could see anything that looked weird. And so their comments were really helpful. Um, someone said about the eyebrows, they looked like they were, they were too close together. And so then when Kevin got back up there after his break, I was looking at that and seeing that the reason why it looked like that was because the eyebrows I had were way too sharp. So I just worked on um, diffusing the eyebrows out a little bit more and that's uh, really happy then with how that looked and then the session was over and I really like how this painting turned out. The portrait painting is a whole lot of fun and I can't wait to do some more of it. Okay so for my still life now I spent Monday working on the base, the plank of wood with the garlic and the vase sitting on it and just trying to get everything to look like it is sitting on the base. And I did the same thing on Tuesday to working on that plank of wood and everything that's sitting on it. It's, I find this really tricky to make everything look like they have weight. They're sitting on the same receding plane. So it took two days to do it, but I'm very, uh, I'm glad I did it and spent the time with it still have things I can correct with that, but I think it's going along a lot better. Wednesday, I work on the background. So I work on the the rug that's hanging in the back. There's a section of it where you see that's light hitting it, and then the rest, it just kind of wraps around the vase. So I'm really hinting at the pattern on the of the rug. I don't want to go too detailed because it is the background, so I don't want too much attention to be brought to it. Um, Matt also gave me cadmium yellow to use on my palette, which is a transparent bright yellow, and if I add that in with black, it gets this really, really delicious deep green color, and I, so I was trying to mix these green or dark yellow colors with black using uh, yellow ochre and yellow ochre is opaque and not transparent and so it was kind of getting this like milky effect to it is the best way that I can think to describe it and it really brought things forward and wasn't sinking back like if I add cadmium red light which I have on my palette to the black is another transparent color so that like it's this really nice deep red color. Also I have alizarin crimson on my palette same thing, um, but the yellow ochre wasn't cutting it, so Matt gave me this uh, transparent color, and I love it. It works really well to set, to still, so it doesn't look just black behind the pot, but I'm pushing other colors 
in there so I can get more effective atmosphere. Then at the end of the day, today on Wednesday, I was talking to my friends and asking them what they thought about the still life and Leigh said something that really clicked and helped a lot with me, which was saying that it's um, a still life of garlic and he said that his attention isn't really just brought to the garlic, it's brought to the rug, the vase, like everything's kind of treated the same. And so when he said that, I was like, oh my gosh, I need to work on the focal point more. And the focal point is obviously the garlic because this still life project is supposed to be a still life of garlic. So on Thursday then, I came in and I worked more on the background in the pot and really trying to sink the pot into the background. So before I had the edges, um, they, were, they weren't razor sharp, but fairly sharp in comparison to if I wanted it to be in the background. I needed to diffuse the edges more. So what I did was I mixed up some paint to work on the edges of the pot. And so I put that on the painting and then I took my dark colors and painted the background into the pot. And then I went back and painted the pot into the background. So the paint is really nicely mixing in background in the pot color. And I just kept going back and forth that way until the edge was as diffused as I wanted it to be. I think it's. I think it looks a lot better now. Um, I still have room that I could diffuse it more if I want to, but uh, I'm gonna wait until I have the painting moved along a bit more, and then I can make a decision on that. Also, Matt was saying to give more attention to the garlic is to make the shadows on the garlic as colorful as possible. He said that the garlics were looking cold and they needed to look more warm. So he was saying if you push more red and yellow into the shadows, it'll be easier to see where you can then push those warmer colors in the lights. So I did that as well and worked on brightening up the plank of wood as well. Friday then, I worked more on the plank of wood and brightening the garlics up. I also worked more on the rug behind it and I like how that's looking a lot more. I've brought the pattern out a little bit, but I uh, was also doing more with adding these really deep blues, reds, and greens into the, the black part of the background. And so that was like coming out nicely with the lighter, lighter part of the rug. So I feel like it the rug definitely feels like it's going behind the pot more and I feel like there's more atmosphere in it as well. So I'm a lot happier with it. I feel like definitely since it's getting since it's getting brighter and more colorful with the garlics and the plank of wood, I feel like the intention is now more brought there, which is what I want. Um, as for the photos and the video, I feel like, uh, well, I, I work until the sun goes down too much and so I can't see what I'm doing. So that's when I take the picture when it's really dark in the studio. So you're not really getting the full effect what things actually <laughs> look like because you can see more in the painting than what you can in the photo and video. Um, so next week, I think I can push all of these elements in the painting more. I'm getting a lot more happier with it now, definitely. All right, and then for the extras in the week. So this is a little pencil drawing that I did of a new model named Jamie. I also worked on my Solomon J. Solomon Samson painting, and I worked on the, so, Around Delilah's legs, there's a table that's tipped over and this lion fur rug, and I worked on those two elements. And so now in this painting, everything I feel like is now brought up to the same level of finish, which is a nice block in. And so now I think my plan for this is to start pushing to resolve certain areas or get them more <laughs> finished. So I'm going to start with the focal point of the painting and it's going to be Samson and the, the then the figures around Samson. So I'm going to be working on those and try and bring them up as much as I can and then I think I'll just keep working out from around those.